Well, friends, today we are very blessed to have a very dear friend of mine with us, and that is Brother Kenneth Copeland. Let's welcome Brother Copeland today. Brother Copeland, welcome. We're so Praise glad to God. With Thank us. you, Rick. You're such a blessing to me. You know, Jesus said, if we're gathered in the same place, he's with us. That's we right. We may be on different continents, but we're together, and Jesus is with us right now. That's Amen. very true. That's correct, man. Well, Brother Copeland, I want to ask you, because people here are asking, is this a sign of the end times? And people really want to know, what does Kenneth Copeland believe about this? What would you say to the Russian believers? Well, Rick, of course, this is Matthew 24. Jesus talked about wars. I've got my Bible, I've got my Bible open. <laughs> he talked about wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilences. Rick, um, as you know, I mean, you're being a Greek scholar. I'm not. I just read your books. <laughs> but Thank you, Brother. We, um, we know that um, pestilence there is better translated plague. And this is a plague. This coronavirus, also, it, this, it, it, go and ahead. It's, and it's plural. It's plural, which means there could be a number of these that oh, are going to yeah. come our way. Oh, yeah. We just got through seeing a, a great locust plague in Africa. I mean, just weeks ago. So, you know, mm. as one fades out, the other one just, just supersedes it and just takes over. But, hey, we just, I mean, it was huge. It was massive. It hadn't happened in who knows how many years all these locusts cut loose throughout Africa. Hmm. And now this plague. Rick, the thing about this COVID-19, the name of the, the coronavirus in this case, it's not a very powerful virus. The symptoms are rather weak. The problem is they do not have all of the proper breakthroughs scientifically with which to fight this thing. Mm -hmm. But it is right. We're, we're just, we're knocking on the door right now. The panic and the fear is worse than the disease. Yes, it is. But it always is. Rick, mm -hmm. I, I want to I want to begin reading something here. Well, no, first of all, but let me back up. On uh, Friday, March the thirteenth, at nine twenty four p.m., Gloria and I had gone to bed, and as our routine usual, well, we we're listening to Brother Hagen, and we we go to bed rather early. And then we, uh, we usually listen to at least two messages from him. We just finished the first one. I mean, just, just, it was just right at the end of it. And suddenly the word of the Lord came to me. This disease called COVID-19 will be over much sooner than you think. Christian people all over this country, talking about the United States, their praying has overwhelmed it. Give me all the glory, saith the Spirit of grace. Many, many people will come to know me through it. I am still Lord over this United States, and I am on the throne, and faith in me changes things. Well, he is just as much Lord over the Russian people as he is over the American people. Amen. He and is. we have so many believers in the former Soviet Union. Uh, we I, do, Brother Copeland. I, I, oh, Lord, I, I wish I could go through my little prayer routine that I do. But, uh, well, anyway, now, Rick, Fear is not okay. It is not. 
Luke chapter 8, you know the story. Jesus is going to Jairus' house mm -hmm. to raise her from the dead. Yes. While they're on the way, the woman that had the issue of blood had to be ministered to. Now, Jesus ministered to that woman, calling her daughter. Mm -hmm. Now, you know that ministered to Jairus because he's hearing daughter. But I want you to notice something. Mm -hmm. How did he respond to the death messenger. Now, he could have said a lot of things. He said to the woman that was healed of the issue of blood, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace. While he yet spake, while he was saying that to her, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. When Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, she will be made whole. So what did he can literally I, say? I, can, can I just make a Go comment ahead. there? Yeah. When you, re, when you read that in the Greek, it is the strongest prohibition that you can use which means Jesus spoke very abruptly. He didn't just say, fear not. He said, cut it out, stop yeah. it, and stop it now. I heard that. And the, when it says, only, be, yeah. only believe, a literal translation is, stop fearing, be believing. It is a command. Yes, sir. The way I, I heard the Lord say it in my, I was preaching this one night, and I heard the Lord say it in my spirit. He turned to him and he said, stop the fear. You believe she'll be made whole. That's right. Stop Amen. it. The spirit of fear is the spirit of death. But we've not been given the spirit of fear. <laughs> we've been given the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. A fear-filled, worried Fear of that, that sickness and disease is not a sound mind, Rick. Fear is not okay. Now, fear not. That very command, those words as you know, are used 95 times in the Bible. Wow. 72 times in the first covenant, 23 times in the second covenant. Now, Jesus used other phrases. There are other phrases in there that say the same thing. Let not your heart be troubled. Do not let it be afraid says the same thing, but I'm talking about the simple phrase, fear not, or stop the fear. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I and other people that take the Bible as final authority in our lives, mm -hmm. when I read fear not, to me, it's a commandment. I'm not going to do it. He wouldn't, Rick, he doesn't tell us to do something that we can't do. Mm -hmm. How do you stop it? You resist it. I want to go here to two places. Sure. Well, I'll tell you what, let's read 1 Peter 5, and then I want to go to 1 John, and then we'll get down to some questions here. First Peter chapter 5, 
Verse 5, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Now, Rick, what does that mean? Love. Be clothed with humility. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care, casting all your fear, casting all your anxieties over on him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking who may devour, resist him steadfastly in the faith. Now, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Oh, Rick, this is it, brother, right here. I mean, you and I have discussed this scripture. Uh, we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here it is our love made perfect or complete or has matured that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfected or, or growing, developing, mature love cast out fear because fear has torment. And God, your Savior, doesn't want you carrying any care. He doesn't want you afraid. He wants you to I know, oh, I have experienced his love. Gnosko, I have experienced his love. I'm born again. I'm born of his spirit. I'm born of the spirit of love. Hallelujah. It's not a spirit of fear. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And how, how do I resist this thing? I'm a uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. You don't dare touch me. My God loves me. I love my God. I don't care if my knees are banging together. Uh, I, I have no fear. I resist you, fear. I resist you, devil. I resist you, spirit of fear. You demon, you. You demon virus, you. In the name of Jesus, I love my God. And God loves Kenneth. And you're not putting that on me. And you're not putting it on my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's over. Amen. I'm healed. <laughs> Amen, Brother Copeland. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop the fear. Believe, and you will mm. be made whole. We have so many promises. Psalm 91. I mean, I am so secure in the love of God and in the promises of God in Psalm 91. It says, no will come nigh our just that, he will honor us and satisfy us and show us his. And that's what I believe, Brother Copeland. That's ours. Yes, it is. There's no question about that. Think about he who dwells hmm. in the secret place dwells. of the most high. I shall abide under the shadow of Shaddai. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jesus is El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough in the flesh. And he's our Lord and he's our Savior. Mm. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. None. Mm. Well, Bro Brother Copeland, what would, if you wanted to give one word to the Russian-speaking people, what would you say to them in the face of this, this event? You've already said a lot, but if you wanted to give like one resounding word, what would you say to them? I would remind them, Rick, of the book of Exodus, when God said, 
the blood of the lamb, the perfect lamb, the lamb without blemish that you shall eat, and that blood from that lamb you shall sprinkle upon the lentils, the doorposts of your house. And when I see the blood, (laughs) when I see the blood, I will not allow the destroyer to come near you. And then go all the way to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. We have overcome him. We have overcome COVID-19 by the blood of the lamb and the power of the words of our mouths, our testimony. We're free. Resist him. I know James 4, 7, Mr. Devil. I have submitted myself to God. (laughs) And when I resist you, COVID-19, you flee. You can't come in my house. You can't come in, even among the Russian people. You cannot come near Mr. Putin's house. We do not allow it. We're the church of the living God. So rejoice. We are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed and the devil is trying to steal our health. Well, praise God forevermore. He cannot have it in my household. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother, Sunday, Brother Zajowski and we're going to share this with you while he and us and I wanted me to tell you he loves you so much. Praise God. Amen. You give him my love, would you please? I will, Brother Carl. And, you know, I'm grateful for the time. You have just filled me with faith today. I knew you would. Praise and God. That everyone who's listening to you is going to be impacted. And on behalf of the Russian people, Brother Copeland, thank you for what you and Gloria have done to support us, to support us with the teaching of the Bible all these years. We are thankful to God. Praise God, Rick. I will close it with this. Tell all the people in the good news churches, God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Jesus. Lord. Is Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Copeland. I'll see you in October. Yes, we're looking forward to that. I can it's hardly be marvelous. I can hardly wait, man. We'll be there. Amen. Thank you, Brother Copeland. Thank you for being with us. You're very welcome, sir. Bye bye. Bye bye.